What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am McSnazzy and we are back today with some more Planet Zoo and our Timbergorge Zoo. And today we have sort of a smaller build, but it it's really nice. We do a lot of detail work and we do a lot of off-camera stuff that I'll show at the end. But we get a lot done for how small of a build it is. So the animal today will be the pygmy hippo. So they're kind of the little baby hippos and they're, they're super cute. They're a little miniature version of regular hippos. And I wanted to put a little smaller of an animal uh, towards this beginning area because I don't want to use all the big African animals just yet because a lot of them are like huge exhibits like we're talking giraffe, uh, lion, zebra, elephants even, even though the elephant in the game is the Indian elephant. I think I'll still put it in the African area because elephants just more, I, I you know you think a little bit more African area in a zoo. Uh, enough of that being said. It's uh, sort of wanted to fill up this beginning area, sort of. We did last episode the bison uh, enclosure, and that was a huge success. Really, really loved what we did there, but we put it all the way a little far from what we've been building so far. So we kind of need to fill in this area in between, and it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do in this area. I sort of had a little bit of a creative block um, at this point in the series. We're in, what, episode 9 now? You know, we've got a lot done so far, but it being like a new exciting zoo, it's still super exciting and everything, but it, me having a ton of ideas is kind of running out. So it took me a little bit to figure out what I'm going to do here, but I'm, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And I'm sure you guys will like it too, but you know, it took, it took a little bit. So we had a ton of footage for this, this small build. So we had to cut a lot of it out because I didn't want to make the video too long. Uh, no more than like 21 minutes is really what I want to shoot for because then it just gets kind of boring. So uh, we cut out a lot of the footage that we did, but we, we end up filling up a lot of this area between, you know, the flamingo exhibit and the entrance to the bison exhibit. There's still some area left, but I think I have a good idea now of what I want to do there. So we'll just jump in and see what I'm doing here in the build. We're kind of... Uh, putting the outlines for the exhibit in and I wanted it to fill in this little area wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to uh, do with the area I kind of wanted to split this sort of path outline that we have in half with this exhibit and then have a shop on the other side but we, we never ended up doing the shop in this video and you can't even see it right now but we're kind of making a little underwater viewing area here with the glass so the guests can walk down into this and look at the hippos while they're swimming underwater. I thought that was a really cool thing that we do. And we end up putting a cover on it later, uh, a little bit of a canopy. And really I jumped around a, a lot in this while recording this uh, episode because I was trying to get the creative juices flowing, you know. Uh, had a little bit of a block so we, we have to jump around in order to get the ideas doing and a lot of this changes like we, we don't keep this glass here right here we end up doing some uh, more above ground terrain look because I just like the idea of looking down into the exhibit instead of just looking through glass sure for the the bigger animals we might might do a little bit of glass work because you know when you go to a zoo you see like the lions and the tigers and the, the bear enclosures usually there's glass between you it's sort of a safety mechanism but I don't want to overuse the glass and I haven't really used the, the glass at all throughout the series because I don't think it's as organic of a barrier type sure it's great you know you can look through and see everything but I, I really like the idea of looking down and using the terrain so you don't have to put these like expensive barriers up the, this glass etc so i think that's a, a good way of doing it but here we're going to jump in we're going to start building the uh, little hard shelter for the hippos and i wanted to build them a little house you know miniature nothing too fancy we don't want to get super detailed because the pygmy hippos aren't really the most uh, appealing attraction at a zoo uh, i've never even i don't think i've ever seen them in a zoo in real life at all but uh you know it's a cool little animal we wanted to add uh, a little bit of a smaller animal and i think this is going to round out our african area so we're gonna we're gonna start it here with the flamingos and the pygmy hippos and you'll see more at the end when we do sort of the aerial shots uh so you can see the outline here but we're gonna start moving back we're just trying to flush out this front area so that we have something to go off of and 
we've done a, f a few animals now. I know a lot of the, the first episodes were a lot of uh, building work. But now we've done like, I think, three animal episodes in a row. And we do something else in this episode, not animal related off camera, but I'll show you that at the end. It's nothing too special, but it, I think it's a nice thing to add, sort of filling out the zoo. But we're going to have to make some more buildings. Uh, the food court that we made a while back is full of guests. Everybody wants food and we need to add another food court area. I think we'll do an African theme one here on the other side of this uh, hippo habitat and I think it'll it'll work out great so that might be next episode who knows I might throw an animal in as well because uh, it's that seems to be the trend we've been going for lately we've been getting a lot fitting a lot more into uh, these episodes as I cut out a lot of it because uh, I just want to take this high level of detail I'm getting a lot better at the game as we've been moving along in this series uh, if you look back at episode one you know that wasn't my best work uh, now that I have a lot more uh, knowledge of the game know what pieces we can work with and some techniques that just help so you know we're, we're putting a lot more detail in our builds now so the episodes are gonna be a lot more detailed as well so they're gonna tend to be a little longer like this 20 minute I don't want to make it longer than 20 minutes because then it gets kind of boring but uh, we yeah we removed that 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 looks so bad the uh, the, the using the terrain to as the canopy and we're gonna we're gonna build our own canopy with that but as I was saying yeah we're, we're getting more detailed I'm getting better at the game and so I can create you know a lot better uh, a lot better things a lot better exhibits buildings uh, just terrain work foliage work as well it, it's just looking a lot better my skills are being a little more refined and we're gonna go back well I'm gonna go back off camera and you know fix up a lot of the old areas make them look a little better I'll, I'll show shots of that in the videos if I if I tend to do it that week while recording the video but we're still gonna keep moving forward in the series we're not gonna necessarily use episodes to go back I'll do that off camera and I just wanna keep building up this zoo and doing a lot more each episode like last episode with the bison and the pronghorns we did a huge area huge area and that's that's not necessarily done yet either there's still some more touch-up work that i need to do but it was it was a long episode already so i didn't want to necessarily do that uh in that episode but with all that out of the way we can talk a little bit more about what we're doing so uh for the underground viewing or the underwater viewing area i wanted a little bit of a canopy here because you're kind of like stepping down under the water I will kind of wanted to do a cave sort of thing but I thought I already had too much rock work already I didn't want to do too many rocks because that's just gonna look uh, boring and you know the same thing over and over again so we go for this wood I think it works for the exhibit the feel it it fits well with the tropical rocks that we're using for these pygmy hippos because it's sort of the same sort of color we cut we do a lot of little bit of stuff there but uh here we're gonna move away from this glass here i am looking at all the other views from every other exhibit we've done so far and every one of them we haven't done same level with glass we've either gone over or put the exhibit down in terms of uh height so here we're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit of train work so we can look down into the exhibit again because i think this is just the best way to do it and I think from a realism standpoint it's probably the cheapest way for a zoo to do it because then you have to like if you have glass on every exhibit and it's all at the same level you know it doesn't look as natural it's probably more expensive in terms of using glass barriers and stuff so it, it's from a realistic standpoint and it looks better I think from a design standpoint it also just looks a ton better as we're gonna adjust the path there so this front area is gonna change a little bit as I said before but I think it just looks a lot better having the terrain go up and having some terrain variants in the park so it's not super flat you know it's been super flat until we started messing around with the orangutans two episodes ago and I want to keep that sort of uh, you know doing a lot of terrain work going forward you know changing the height to the zoo the sight lines we're, we're gonna want to see things off in the distance so we want to go towards it we don't want everything to be flat where you can only really see what's in front of you and it that's just that's just boring and the height variance adds a lot of a lot of nice looks to the zoo you know it, it's not flat it looks more natural realistic and that's sort of the feel i want to go for you know this this is a 
dense foliage zoo. It, it looks great. Zoos are a little more cozier, and I kind of like that feel. We're going to keep going with it. But here we are. We're going to start doing some of the foliage work within the habitat. And really, the pygmy hippos are tropical uh, biome, aquatic biome, and African continent. And there's not a lot of plants to work with, I got to be honest with you. In terms of bushes, like... Uh, to make it really dense because the pygmy hippos t love a tons of foliage there's no bushes so i have to kind of sink down these trees in order to make bushes which i do everywhere because you really need bushes when you want to make a really nice looking dense foliage area and so i have to shove down these trees in order to make it work i wish there was a like a tropical bush or something that that could other than like uh the ferns that we have that could just look nice that the pygmy hippos would like but i wanted to use the foliage that they liked i didn't want to cheat and use uh other foliage because we, we still want the zoo to work uh well even though they came out with the update where we can turn off a lot of the stuff in sandbox mode i still want to keep doing the habitats like you could do them in franchise or something still working i want to leave the animal welfare on because i still want to make habitats that they enjoy I don't want to make habitats too small or too crazy that they don't like because it's just more fun and realistic when we use the the welfare aspects and that's you know they put it in the game so we want to use it i did turn off the power the water quality some of the uh, guest stuff and the staff stuff because a lot of that stuff is just a little bit a little bit crazy sometimes so this is a sandbox so we want to do what we want so so now we're gonna start working on this waterfall um, we're gonna get back to it in a second adjusting the barriers here but I wanted to create sort of a waterfall on it because that's uh, you know I haven't had a waterfall in this park yet I thought it'd be great for these pygmy hippos it works on this little because they don't need a lot of uh, land space so we can put a waterfall in and that's such a youtuber thing to do because if you watch any planet do YouTube video they put a waterfall always in but uh, I wanted to show how to do it here. This is my first waterfall in this game. Have not made one before. I did a couple in Planet Coaster, but this is the first one in this game. So really what we're gonna do is just a little bit of a stream waterfall. It's not like a huge flowing waterfall. It's just gonna go between these rocks and we're just gonna use the water effects. No real water is used here. Um, we're going to push this ground down, but we don't actually put any water into it. We just do some terrain paint, put rocks around it. And you can do this in your zoos as well, where you can just use the uh, the water effects to make it look like there's a stream flowing through. You don't necessarily need to mess around with the terrain and actually put the in-game water in there because that's super hard to do, first of all. And you can't really fit it in these small areas like I'm trying to do here, so... If you just use the water effects, it really does get the job done, and it looks really nice. It makes it look like there's actually water there, so there's really no need to go through all the terrain headaches, because the terrain can be hard to work with in this game sometimes. But now we're going to add some enrichment items for the pygmy hippos. Uh, I'm going to add this mud bath for the first time. We've, we've been able to use that for a few of the animals, but haven't quite used the enrichment item yet we're gonna use those little ferns as like an entrance to their uh little hard shelter area i really like what we did there they actually walk through it to get in so it gives them a lot of privacy that they can get away from the guests which i think is really nice and it just looks kind of uh realistic and natural and and cool at the same time so we're gonna put some rocks around this uh, mud pit because the uh the wood outlines just don't look natural at all and this looks a lot better. And we used this technique with the uh, the flamingo habitat way back when to uh, make the, the I think the foraging pool look a little better. But we're just gonna keep up with this foliage work uh, using a lot of trees for these dense bushes and a lot of palm trees as well because they, they look great. And this is one of the more detailed habitats I've done so far. And I really like that even though it's a small habitat, we still want to use the same amount of detail we've been doing. And I think we're getting more detailed as we go on, as I was discussing before. So we're going to keep that going because it's, it's really fun making these habitats super detailed. And my techniques are getting better how to fill up the space and everything. So I'm going to let it play for a little while and I'll jump back in when we do something a little different.
So here we are back at our canopy. We wanted to add a little bit of accents to it because it was really boring. It was also just a floating ceiling of wood. Didn't look that great. So we're going to add a little bit of accents. We're just going to use the same sort of colored logs along the side to make it look a little nicer. We're going to add a little bit of support so it looks realistic. And that's basically all we do. I just wanted to show you guys how we did this necessarily cut this out because this is a little bit valuable information of how we kind of make these uh, small structures look a little more realistic and like structurally sound so I'll let it play but that's kind of why I wanted to leave it in Here we are, we're jumping into the sign I built off camera. I did a lot of work off camera. We're gonna do a lot of cuts here towards the end of the video because I, I knew the time was running out. We were getting close to the 20 minutes mark and I didn't wanna make it too long. So we do that sign off camera. I think it turned out really nice and we're getting better at making signs for the animals. Sadly, a lot of the editable signs are really small. They don't look that great. So we kinda have to use these letters for like every exhibit. But I, I love the letters, the letters look great. It's better than having to make your own letters like we had to do back in Planet Coaster. But in terms of signs, I think they could do a little better of a job of making some bigger signs and some better fonts, but what's she gonna do? Here we are, we're gonna do a little bit of underwater work since it is an underwater viewing area. Lots of rocks and lots of uh, seaweed sort of looking stuff, so it looks nice. And now the last thing we're gonna show in this time lapse is how I made this little simple fence that we're gonna put around the outline here. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. You can just make a, a fence like this with uh, four four objects. It's pretty simple. And here we are in the first person walkthrough. We're gonna press play here. And I really like showing you guys how everything looks in first person. Now we did a lot of off camera work. You'll see here in a second. Uh, we do a lot of foliage work right here along the side, of course. We're sort of filling out this area and it looks great, a little bit of rocks, but here's what we did off camera in a second. It's going to be a little picnic area. So we wanted to fill out that little area between the staff center and the new pygmy hippo exhibit. And I just kind of put down a little picnic area. This is sort of uh, area at the front of the zoo. If you bring your family, you bring your lunch, you know, uh, you're not necessarily buying anything. You can just picnic here and I think a lot of zoos have that. So it's just a nice realistic thing to fill up the space. And here's the little pond we did to uh, break up the space. We kind of do a lot of this dense foliage work, but I kind of want to do a little bit of a stagnant pond. I think it looked really good, but here we are walking into the exhibit. We're going to walk up these stairs and see the sign right in front of us. Really like how that sign turned out. It's very simple, but it gets the job done. And here's the view of the pygmy hippo area from the upper viewing area. And I think it looks great. You can see the waterfall in the back there and a lot of the foliage work we did along the side here when we lifted this terrain up i think it looks great add a little benches looks really good and there's a hippo uh, coming out of the leaves right there of his little hard shelter it looks awesome i'm really happy with how this uh, smaller build turned out you know we don't do a ton of smaller builds so far but this looks really great and this is the underwater viewing area we added some uh, signage in here some educational screens and i think it looks really good the uh, foliage work we did underwater really fills out the underwater area it makes uh, the underwater viewing area look a little better and i think it just looks nice it's simple but it looks natural and it, it really looks great i'm really happy with everything that we did in this exhibit and here we are, we're going to walk in the exhibit. It looks super nice, uh, small, but works for the pygmy hippos because they're so small. And here's the waterfall we built. I think it looks super nice. It worked out in the end and everything is just looking great. And here's the hippos. Let's see what they're doing. And yeah, this looks good. I'm really, I'm really loving all this. We did a little bit of height variance here. We're going to step up on this little cliff we did. Oh, looks like they're doing their, I think that's their mating animation. So yeah, it looks like we're going to have a baby pygmy hippo here soon. And it looks like we're nearing towards the end of the video, guys. Here we'll do some aerial shots. And this is kind of the fill out we're doing here. And I think it looks really nice. We're filling the space well. 
We need to fill up a lot of space. We're going to move back, move to the bigger animals, the big shops, the exhibits, the reptile house, and the insect house. And I'm really excited for those builds. But here's the picnic area I did off camera. I think it turned out really nice. Nice natural, super wooded and everything. And here's another nice view of the habitat. But thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate all the feedback and support. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And stay tuned on the channel for the next one. We're going to be moving forward in the zoo. We might move back and do a little bit of a shopping area for the guests, a little bit of some food, etc. Or we might uh, do another animal. I'm not entirely sure yet, but stay tuned on the channel to see the next one. We're going to keep going with the series. I'm having a great time. I appreciate all the support. Thank you for everything, guys, and I'll see you next time.